Hi, this is Peter with Side Effects, and today we're going to be talking about the Feather Template Interpolate SOP. Uh, so this node, just like it sounds, actually takes um, different Feather templates that we've created and allows us to kind of blend between them across uh, the guide curves that we that we input to this node. So let's take a look a little closer at how this works. So here we have two different Feather templates. One is the default Feather template that's made when you type Feather template in the tab menu. And then I have also a custom one that I've made here. So we can look at both of those together. They're a little bit different. Um, this one has a split in it and is shaped pretty dramatic, dramatically different. And um, so what we're going to do is use these as kind of two different um, inputs that we can kind of blend between and play around with. So we need a sort of simple groom to, to figure this out and to see how this works. So I've created this here to create our guides uh, for this for this groom. And so what I'm going to be doing is just basically making seven straight lines here. That's really all that all that we're doing. And that whole network here, this whole network actually just adds some attributes to that, make sure that the orientation of our barbs are correct, uh, things like that. And so really the important thing is taking a look at this stash and what this has on it. So importantly, it has the barb orient point attribute. So that makes sure that we know the orientation of this. And then uh, some primitive attributes are the feather template that we want to apply to it, uh, the template names, and then the template weights. And so these are going to be used in different modes. They don't all have to be here to be used in every mode, but we'll talk about that in a second here in the feather template interpolate. So what this node will do is it will take in uh, the feathers here, our template feathers, or our guides here, and then our feather templates. So these are the, the two templates that we've created here. So it's going to try to match these two up now together. And there's a few different ways that it can do that. So let's, let's look through these methods. So the first one is just group. And this one, we can say what group we want it to be. We could set it to be zero or one. We have two different uh, groups here that we can that we can isolate. Obviously, two feathers, two groups. Pretty straightforward to figure that out. Um, if we match by name attribute here, we're using this template name uh, attribute to match the feathers. So we've we've corresponded this feather zero and feather one to the names of these these feather templates here. So we have feather zero and feather one. So that's important. And those are finding these curves, taking these curves and finding the templates that match up to those. So that is a pretty, uh, pretty basic way of doing it, but gives you the ability to um, kind of define which guides have which feather templates applied to them. So just with the, the name attribute, you're able to kind of use this interpolate node and match those together. The final way of doing this is the weight arrays. And this is much more um, nuanced kind of um, way of doing this. So what it's what it allows us to do is take these two feather templates and actually blend between them. So you can see here we have our template weights um, and these are blending between feather zero and feather one. And we have the two different weights for those um, along the line here. So this uh, number six is completely feather one, whereas uh, curve zero is completely feather zero. So you can see here we have feather zero and blend all the way to feather one down here. So this is this is a way to be able to kind of um, define a few main points that we want to hit and then have weights applied uh, to the rest of them. So that this is the crux of how this node works and what it actually does, where it takes templates and matches them to these kind of guide curves. So Let's take a look at a couple more parameters in here just so we can see how we can then work with these even better. So this shaft um, section here allows us to resample the shaft or not. So in this case, uh, since our curves here are just, you know, uh, a few points per, um, in this case, we'll see that we'll have barbs only at those specific points. Um, now, if we have this match template point distribution, uh, this will make sure that it's kind of matching up to the distribution of our actual template um, while keeping the same rough resolution. However, if we uncheck that, we'll be right back to where we were um, with with it just being even across the whole thing. So we can kind of control that there. The other thing we can do is change the number of shaft base segments. And how this works is it'll either allow you to uh, shift more segments to the base, or if we don't match the template point distribution, this will say that the uh, shaft is, you know, in this case, three segments up and then the feather starts. So we can have, we can kind of grow the length of this, uh, the base of our shaft here. So that's, the, what this is specifically um, showing. So if we go back to our resolution mode and switch this back to um, and check on resample shaft, 
what we can do here is we can do a few different things. We can match the template. So this is matching it exactly with the number of point distribution that's here. We also have a resolution multiplier that will allow us to be able to lower uh, and raise uh, how much how much resolution we have from from our original templates. Uh, we can also do some other things here like adaptively um, change the resolution and constantly um, uh, change the resolution. So here we can just give it a, a very uh, straightforward um, hard-coded number to hit, uh, whereas it can be adaptively done uh, based on segment lengths and different things here that we might want to set up. So uh, this is the way that you can kind of set your the resolution of your feathers when you're at this interpolation step. Um, again, we have the um, the same thing with our barb segments, the barbs being the segments here that come off. These are kind of those GPU drawn, um, you know, curves or whatever. In this case, we can set it to a custom number. So we can set it to one or give it more, you know, smoothness along it. You can probably see that better here. Um, as we add more segments, those become more smooth, or we can just have them perfectly straight. Um, or we could have it match the template and it will, you know, exactly take what we had in our template geometry. Uh, and finally, down here, we have some attributes that we can control. So uh, the primitive attributes and point attributes are just going to be copying those over from the guides. Um, there's also uh, barb attributes that we can make sure that we're matching up. So if we have uh, different barb attributes that need to uh, be applied, we can apply those as well. Um, now, the int interesting thing here is the interpolate UVs. Now, with it off, you can see that we aren't actually bringing uh, those UVs over um, anymore. If we take a look at our attributes here, we have um, we have everything except our UVs showing. So if we interpolate uh, our UVs, this will make sure that we're actually getting kind of a blend between these two UV spaces that we've set up. Now, this might not always be what you want, and that's why it's turned off by default. Um, but in a lot of cases, this might be um, exactly what you want. So in this case here, we're we're getting the UV attributes, you know, basically directly from these these separate feathers. Uh, so there's not really any interpolation truly happening here. It's just making sure that those UVs are coming across. So it might be something you want, or you might want to add UVs later. Um, but certainly good to know how uh, how that can work. So that is how the feather template interpolate node works. Uh, hopefully this gives you a better idea of some of the parameters and how they're used and uh, how you can implement this into your workflows. Uh, thanks so much for watching.